Hey everyone, welcome back to the shop. I've got the wing out in the garage. Let me go bring it back in and show you where we're at. Success. It's a part. I was figuring about three hours and usually I have to triple that. So it typically takes me about nine hours. I'm very bad at judging the amount of time it's going to take to get the project worked on. So what we ended up doing was about just shy of two hours. So I came out ahead on that one. Uh, there were certain parts that I had to battle and it was the, the part that was holding everything together. So let me go ahead and show you where we're at. So with everything being cut apart, I'm going to try to do this all one-handed. Everything will slide apart from side to side. And this thing was just a joy to get out because of how it was glued in. Um, what I'm going to do to reinforce this, because it was just glued to balsa. And that's what I don't like about this. And this wasn't epoxy, and this stuff was just a bear to cut through. So what I'm going to do when I glue this back in place because I've already got the spars open. I'm gonna box these in. I'm gonna come in with some quarter inch flat stock glued into place so that when these, this little piece right here gets glued in, this whole area here is gonna be glued in. Uh, Cause I wasn't happy with the way that was glued in regardless. But uh, for the added, for the little bit of added weight to it, I am not concerned about that at all because it's just balsa. All right, with the easy part done, now comes the hard part. First thing I'm gonna do is come in. I started getting certain parts cleaned up. Like I said, this was all cleaned up up front, ready to go. Uh, now it's gonna come time to, I'm gonna remove these two lower parts. I forgot to do that, forgot to take this off. So when I come in with the plane, I can go ahead and get it all sh shaped down to the angle and the depth I needed to. Uh, so I'll go ahead and take these two stringers off on the lower ones on both ends. And then I'll come back get these things tapered down first and once that's ready to go uh, on both sides then I can go ahead and get this piece glued back in as so I want to try to get this part done today so if I can get this glued back in today then probably give me about two or three hours uh, tomorrow and the wing itself should in theory uh, be complete now the way that this is going to get glued together this will get glued together with probably, I gotta see what I've got here. I've got my DEVCON five minute. I've got the JB Weld five minute. If you were looking for some good 60 minute, this stuff's like good 60 minute. It takes forever to start setting up. And I don't know if I've got anything else. Oh, what's this, what's this? Some older five minute, we're gonna say no to older five minute. That was a donation. It'd probably still work. There we go, we got some old, some good old fashioned Bob Smith uh, 30 minute. So I'll go ahead and the wings, the wings will be the lower, both sides left and right will be put together with 30 minute epoxy. That way it's gonna give me ample time to get everything properly set up. It's gonna be set up on a flat board, upside down. Uh, just so that I know that we're going to have everything straight across the front. And what I may end up doing is coming in uh, and it's kind of a hit or miss. But what I may do is come in possibly with some screws to hold this in place. Because I can come in with balsa if I wanted to. I can do with balsa. Uh, with some light ply behind it if I wanted to just run some screws through Just to make sure I've got something that's going to be a firm attachment point on either side uh, While that 30 minutes sets up because once the 30 minutes set up I'm not even going to touch the wing for a day I can't do one side and then come back the next day and do the other side. They're both going to be done on the same day 24 hours later all right, it is back on the bench, and the only thing I have left to do is just finishing capping the bottom of it. Uh, I've got the whole top done. You'll see it when I, when I get the other camera out. Um, and it's just because I'm going to put gussets up in the front end of this thing, and I want to show you where I'm going to put them. 
because this thing, I have to keep the front of it open when I'm go ahead and drilling through the front of the fuselage uh, for the mounting plate for the pins, uh, just so that that way I have access to everything on the backside. Uh, it's just what I prefer to do. All right, now with the wing, why I did not show the cutting apart of the wing. Uh, I purposefully did not do it because I didn't know how much time it was going to take and I had to and I knew I was going to have to keep flipping the wing around upside down right side up left right spinning it around and because I didn't want to have to focus on making sure that the camera was looking in the right location when I was working on it I just decided the more important part and I, I kind of wish I had it so you guys could have seen it um, but the most important part was to get the cuts as clean as possible because you may have a little bit of variance as you're cutting down uh, through the through the glue joints where the blade may want to wander right or left when it's going down. So what you're doing is you're going from the top about halfway down, flipping it upside down, the bottom from about halfway up or halfway down uh, just to try to meet in the middle. And the reason why I did it that way is because any little bit of variance that there could be in the cut line left to right, I was going to do a little bit of dress up of that cut line, but then it was also getting glued back together again with, with epoxy. So I was not really that concerned about the strength of the glue joints because I knew the glue joints were going to be very strong. Uh, the glue joints are always going to be stronger than the wood, which is the way glue is designed to work. Now, gluing it back together, I knew that was going to be uh, that was going to be quite a little adventure. So I opted for the 30-minute epoxy. Now, if you guys have used 30-minute epoxy or even you know a 60-minute or one-hour epoxy, it does have that kind of working time. I've done one-hour epoxy and mixed too big of a batch in a cup. In about five minutes, I had to throw that little cup outside because it got so hot it started melting the plastic container it was in. So that's when I uh, learned it was very important to mix in smaller batches with the kind of epoxy that we're using in here. So when I mixed the 30 minute together, uh, put everything together, uh, made sure everything was properly lined up. I had all the clamps set up that I normally use when I'm gluing this together. So that was all my spring clamps. I had five ace blocks. Here's one right here, five ace blocks sitting under each wing tip. So I knew at that point that once everything got glued down, you had the, the, the pretty much the glue joints. So they're sitting flush on the surface, on, on the workbench surface. So when I got everything to glue together, having it been clamped up, everything looked rock solid. I sat down here and as soon as I was able to touch the 30 minute epoxy and it was starting to harden. I decided, hey, it's lunchtime. I'm going to go run upstairs, grab something to eat. So I came back down about a half hour later. And you know what happens. If you're not watching, things will move all on their own. Uh, on the, the, the front spar, it slid down. Not what I wanted it to do, but it slid down. So what I had to do was grab my little flush cut saw and just really quick, and it was on the right side, start plunging down as quick as I could. And because the epoxy didn't set up all the way in the middle, it was just getting the outer edges pretty good. And then went all the way through, pulled it apart, uh, realizing that there was no damage to the wood. So it went straight down through the glue joint, which was good. So what I did, uh, I, I opted for five minute epoxy. In, in which case, all of you guys that have used 5-Minute Epoxy knows how fast that stuff can set. Was it the, the smart move for me? It, not really. I, it, it, it could have gotten bad really quick. I didn't have any 5-Minute and I didn't want to go through the 30-Minute through the Epoxy again because I wasn't going to trust it. I was going to have to babysit it for about an hour down here. So when I was mixing the epoxy up, you can see there's my first little batch. And when I realized I didn't have enough, I needed just a little bit more just for the for the, the aft side, for the rear side of the trailing spar. Um, so I did a panic batch. And as you can see, my mixing stick snapped off on the second batch. I, I really didn't care about that. That's going to just be on my mixing, my little mix, my stirring board for a while. Um, yeah, so I got the stuff mixed, 
put it on the backside, put it all together, and I got it five minute epoxy done before it started to set. So the, the right side came out perfect. And when I measured it, this side over here uh, came up at 12 millimeters, which I was happy with the 12 millimeters. It should have been closer to 15 millimeters, but I was okay with 12, that's gonna be fine. The other side came out at 13. So I will take that one millimeter difference in height over 30 inches. And if you look at the whole thing over five feet or six feet, whatever it is, um, completely acceptable. Uh, I guarantee you any, uh, any real plane built back in the teens, back in that, you know, 1918, um, they weren't that accurate. So all they had to do is they, you know, they got them built and ready to fly and you went and you flew it. Well, for the bottom wing, I am very happy with the bottom wing. So let me go ahead and grab the other Camry. I'll do a quick little walkthrough on things because it's not being, it's not done being sanded. So you always know how much time you're going to be spending sanding when it comes time to cover the plane, whether you're using mylar or you're using fabric. It's you're usually, usually you're going to get it within something where you're going to probably spend with doping with putting dope in nitrate dope uh because this will be nitrate dope covered um you're looking at, on this plane probably pretty close to about three hours for the for the first sand and then you're going to be sanding you're going to put down put in two two coats of nitrate dope so it uh, soaks into the wood uh do a light sand put another coat on and then do a light sand on top of that and then you're deciding at that pl at that point in time whether um, you're gonna, that's gonna be good enough for you to go ahead and cover it, or maybe you want to put one more coat on. So it's, yeah, it's very time consuming. All right, now as we start slowly walking down the bottom, here's kind of where we're at. Because you could see this side, of course, he, he did leave a very nice gap there, so I got to fill that gap up. But we come down on this side and we're sitting there. We're gonna do this in metrics for all you metrically kind of people. 54 millimeters. Up here at this end, 54 millimeters. Here at the right side wing tip. Hey, go figure, 54 millimeters. Come up here by the center. Yeah, 50 millimeters. <laughs> So, so apparently when the guy, whoever Phil spurt this one, he, he cut, he cut it wrong. So why he cut it like that? I have no idea. So anyway, cause as you know, I didn't do anything to the bottom of this. I, I was more interested in what's on the top side of this one because that's where the issue was. The bottom, I was able to work with the bottom. So you're not going to see this, even though it tapers towards the front, you're not going to see that. If I wanted to put a filler strip in here, I could put a little filler strip in. It's not that big of a deal, but it's not necessary um, because it, it's it's for, it's firmly glued down. Uh, so I'm not concerned about that at all. So we're okay with that. So only only you, me, and whoever watches this one uh, knows about it. Now, as we get to the center section, let me go ahead and lean this up against the coffee decanter. All right, so what I plan on doing with this, because I, I'm leaving this open because this is where you have to drill the hole through uh, for the dowel rods to mount this underneath the fuselage, towards the front of the fuselage. So I'll leave this open and then as soon as it's all done, all the holes are drilled, everything works good. All I gotta do is just get a couple strips, just cap it and call it done. So what I plan on doing on this one, because they're gonna be very close to the center. They're gonna be right about here. The, I think it's three ace dowels. So what I plan on doing is that's where the dowel's gonna come through. And I'll probably do it with spruce. I could do it with balsa, but I'll probably do it with some spruce. I'm gonna make some, uh, just pretty much just do some custom tri stock, some triangle stock, uh, put a gusset here, a gusset here, one here, and then one over here and then do that up in here as well. Um, this piece is not gonna fail. I just wanna have a little more strength up in here uh, just because of all the, all the work I had to do to it and let's call it when I had to cut it apart, any damage that could have been done even though this stuff is all glued together solid. So 
when it's all done, I'll be 100% happy with this one. It's just, it's, it's a lot better than it was. And total amount of time it took me to do this, uh, where it's at right now, total time was probably about six hours. So not a full day, um, but once you get started, you're better off just going nonstop. So let me go ahead, get everything set up in there because you can see what's sitting there on the, on the table. And let me uh, show you what it's going to look like with the wing mounted on it and the things I'm going to have to do right up there on the front of the, uh, the little mounting plate or on the rear of the mounting plate because of how it was improperly glued in. Oh joy. Now, as you can see, the plane is sitting out here very comfortably, and this is the spot where I do mostly do big assembly for testing, and this is where I do all my spray painting too. Um, now, the reason why this thing is out here, not just to show you what I've got to do to fix this so that this sits properly in here, it's also because this is the next step. So as soon as I get this thing and the wing all set up, ready to go, then we're jumping over to putting that motor up inside there that should be fun now to begin with hopefully the lighting will be good enough for you let me try to get it so that you get a little bit better background all right right here is the issue this comes down and it's stepped out it's about a sixteenth of an inch this should be flush with this spot and this for the landing gear needs to be pushed forward just a little bit um, not a not super critical if I want to leave that the way it is I can just adjust the angle on that just a little bit and so that's really not going to affect anything uh, so that may still just be a simple through that and leave this the way it is I got to see how well everything is glued up on the inside and once again it's all wood glue to put it together so I'm going to come in and gusset uh, wherever you got plywood against plywood with just a little bit of wood glue in there so I don't like that so anyway, the other issue is we're having is we come under here and look up and hopefully you'll be able to see it nicely enough. He also drops it down about an eighth inch here. So this whole, this whole cross piece and the landing gear mount is at an angle. So it slopes down about an eighth inch to this side. So that side being even, this side being dropped. So I may end up um, cutting this loose. I haven't decided yet. I got to figure out, I got to figure out if there's an easier way to do it. Um, so hopefully, because if I wanted to, I can shave it off and make it level, and then inside the block itself, because I've got my little teeny carbide burrs, I can come in and just deepen up the, the groove, uh, just to offset that a little bit, and that would probably be easier than splitting this whole thing. So, yeah, it's going to be fun. So let me go ahead, and I'm going to hook the wing in, we'll mount the wing up on the back, use the clamps to hold it in there, and then I'll show you how close it is to fitting. It's actually fitting halfway decent. Um, this needs to be touching up on the back side, but it's because that side over there on the arc is hitting. Uh, where this side, it's sitting proud, not by much, but it's almost hitting on this side too. So there's just going to be a little bit of sanding, and it's the ply where it's hitting. It's not hitting on the balsa. So I'll go ahead and just pretty much just caress both sides very slowly till it comes up and fits as, as solid as it can. Uh, for the cabane mounts, this is okay. Everything seems to be fitting very nicely here between this side and the other side. Up here, there's a little bit standoff. Uh, it's a little too far out, so the other side might be touching, and it is. So it's going to be less than a sixteenth of an inch of balsa on either side just to fill up that gap. So we'll get it so it's centered. And then as you come in here, you can kind of see that little teeny gap uh, where it's about a sixteenth of an inch or so. So like I said, I can come in, I can sand the balsa on the bottom of that thing. So it is sitting, instead of being vertical like this, it's just slightly angled. And that could still slide right in and be flush and there wouldn't be an issue with that. So all depends how I want to do it. And at this point, I may just go ahead and uh, just sand the bottom of that and have the angle on this um, if possible. So we'll see what happens. Because up front is just balsa. It's the plywoods on the back side of it. So there's a bigger gap on this side than there is on that side. But this can all be taken care of once it's all in, sanded down. And the wing will be sitting level to the ground. Um, then I'll note that the wing is at 90 degrees. Because I can come in and measure at 90 uh, from side to side and see how well that's going to fit. And then me saying, hey, I could measure it and see how close it is to 90. Let's grab one of my squares. 
So as we come in, we go right up against the side. Well, if that's not square, I don't know what else that is. That's just plain square. Let's see what this side looks like. It better be the same. Yep, it's the same. All right. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. All right, probably heard me go wow, wow, wow. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> I didn't realize. <laughs> I guess I can still kind of do good work. Um, yeah, I didn't really expect it to be, you know, exactly 90 degrees on both sides, but that makes me ecstatic. That's that very happy. Um, so now that uh, with that, I know that everything's going to be good uh, because we know that that wing is flat across the top. So assuming that the way that that thing is sitting up in there, where it's touching the top and it's touching the curvature of the, of the, the plywood, if that bottom wing is 90 degrees to the fuselage, uh, there's it's the way it's got to be. So it's, <laughs> it's the first time I haven't, building a plane, I haven't had to make adjustments to that. And I've built many planes. So I'm happy with that one. So at least when the guy built the initial framework, he did something good. And if that's the one good thing, uh, I'll take that. Um, cause you saw, if you guys watched the, the videos from, from day one that I, when I received that, um, how much work had to go into just the fuselage. So that took me quite some time. So on that happy note, I'm going to have to say that bottom wing is, is done ready for final sanding and ready for covering. Um, so it makes me really happy. So let's just go ahead. We're going to call this a video. And I'll see you guys next time. I'm back down in the shop. Mm -hmm.